will quickly understand the read and write operation in a six transistor SRAM circuit. Let's start with a read operation. First and foremost, when we want to start doing a read, we need to assume something that is already being written previously at node A and node B. Let's assume that A was initially being written by a value logic 0 and B was initially being written by a value logic 1. It makes sense as well if A is 0, this 0 through this path goes to the input of inverter 2 and P2 turns on and it will pull B node B to logic value 1 or VDD. Now we have assumed that A is at 0 and B is at 1 and we want to read this 0 at A. So let's start the first and foremost step. What we need to do is make our word line high. When I say high, it means make it VDD. So from our past learnings, if word line goes high, what do we know that an NMOS transistor, when an input high is applied at its gate, it turns on. So this ensures that my transistor N3 and N4 are turned on. The next thing what we need to do is make a bit and bit bar also high. High as we mentioned is nothing but making it VDD. So if bit is also VDD and bit bar is also VDD, mind you don't get confused bit and bit bar are just the names they can have the same polarity and in future clips we will see how to make both of them vdd at the same time for the time being let's just make bit and bit bar equal to vdd so what do we understand if bit is vdd and bit bar is vdd and a was initially at zero can anyone tell me if a is zero and this zero going to inverter 2, P2 turns on. Is everyone very clear about that? Great. And it pulls node B to logic 1, which we already discussed previously. This one goes to the input of the first inverter and it turns on N1. So in summary, from this, what we understand is, by executing these three steps, my transistor N1 would be on, my transistor N3 would be on from the left hand side, and from my right hand side, my transistor P2 would be on and transistor N4 would be on as well. So we need to analyze the left and right hand circuits individually. So let's first start analyzing the left hand side circuit. Okay. So we just saw that my left, these two transistors were on. This transistor was nothing but we called it as N3. And this was nothing but we call it as N1. Great. This was connected to word line, which was nothing but VDD. This is nothing but my node A, which was initially written as 0, and we want to read this 0. N1 was getting the input from B, which was nothing but VDD. Isn't it? And here was my bit line, which was also connected to VDD. So what's going to happen here is, if you see from the past what we have learned, if we have two tanks of water, and both these tanks are connected through a pipe, and if one tank has water, which is more compared to the other one, what does your common sense tell you? What? That? The water will flow from higher level to lower level. Till what time? Till the time both become equal. Does everyone agree to this? Yes? Great. Well done. You have understood a concept. 
Same thing happens in electronics as well. Entry transistor has one foot which is connected to a potential VDD and other foot which is connected to a potential zero. So what's going to happen is the current will start flowing from higher potential to lower potential. So bit will go down similar to the tank. The water from the higher level will go down and water in the tank which was at the lower level will go up. Bit will go down at the same time what we also understand is node A will tend to rise in voltage. Now at the same time what else is also happening is N1 is also on. Now N1's one node is connected to ground and if A keeps on increasing N1 is also trying to pull node A towards zero. So in short a is being pulled to logic 1 by N3 and A at the same time is pulled to logic 0 by N1 and if you remember we cannot lose this 0 because we want this 0 to be red. So do you all agree that there is a fight between N3 and N1? One of them needs to win.